the game is pool and this is it, the final of the Matthew Brown Classic. Now, who will lay claim to this magnificent trophy and a major share of the prize money of £4,800? Will it be the defending champion Greg Farron or his challenger Andy Appleton? The action is from the best of 11 frames, analysed for you for the final time by Norrie Donald and Mick McGoldrick. Gentlemen, let's play some final pool. Here we have Andy, already got his jacket off, ready for action on the left. And Welcome Greg, fan who we all know, on the right, to contest this evening's <coughs> final. Now, now lag for who takes the break. This will be an intriguing final. Uh, Andy Appleman has won the lag. I would suggest that before the final starts, a favourite must be Greg. Uh, because of ex his experience uh, and the amount of tournaments he's won in comparison with Andy. But Andy's also a very good player and I'm sure he'll do himself justice in the final. Well, he certainly, certainly broke a pack. Nothing went down from the break. So it's now up to Andy to decide which colour he will go on to. I would suggest that there is a very good chance on yellow. Is is actually yellow balls nominated? And I hit that another two or three inches, and he would probably went for a finish. Craig, you're playing red balls. <coughs> <coughs> Our match referee is Jim Maines from Dundee. Jim's one of the more senior referees in Scotland, having been involved in the game for some ten years. Nice little touch shot from Greg. And Greg's playing so confidently at the moment that just a sniff of a finish and he's, he's looking. Maybe delivered, but as I said before, he's he's absolutely deadly, especially when he's on song. And as you say, the way he's playing at the moment, uh, I wouldn't predict that he couldn't finish this game, regardless of where the balls are. Now that's one of the things that I admire about Greg's game. Uh, especially when he plays at this level. Uh, at all times he's looking to see if he can finish. And I don't mean he plays kamikaze or anything like that. I mean if there's a finish there, however difficult, then Greg will be looking to see if he can do it. <coughs> Once again he's just overrun at a touch. He actually plays for possessions for the red into the right hand middle pocket. We're seeing now the easiest shot, the two that he's got is probably long into the bottom right hand pocket here and taking away across the table for one of the two side reds. Well, his position was very good, but it was just out in the pot. Andy started off this tournament quite nervously in the early rounds, but uh, as it's progressed, he's settled down very well, hasn't he, Mick? Yes, he's going from strength to strength. He's only got one problem ball here. That's a, the top yellow of the two at the side of the, the left-hand side of the table. Uh, I would suggest that he probably will be playing for an angle on the bottom left hand yellow here to be able to kick 
other one out. Always well away with that one. Looks as if Greg is going to try a very fine cut here into the left hand pocket. Down behind the D. <coughs> he's missed it but in doing so he's, he's also covered the yellow in the middle of the D. And he's left Andy in a bit of trouble here. But I don't see how Andy can play a, bit, a real safe shot here, really. Well, that's certainly not very safe, Mick. As you say, it's, it was a difficult one to play. Well, the idea behind that shot really was to cover the, bet, the bottom left-hand corner here so that the red wouldn't go down. Uh, He really never played it as if that was going to happen. And playing that particular shot has made it a bit difficult for Greg, actually. Greg looks as if he's playing a deep screw into that. Well, thank you. Possible, we're looking for a long plant up the table here. Yes, I think he meant to bring the whites a little bit further back. Yes, it's a bit short of pace there. Uh. He's still going to play the long plant, and he'll probably. The idea behind that shot was to open the red out across the table, but it's not worked very well for him. I think it was a brave shot at this early stage of the game. It's given Andy a bit of an opening here. Yes, I mean, Andy's actually played a, 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 a really good positional shot there because he's left himself the perfect angle here on this last yellow. I mean, it's just a matter of coming off two cushions and across and taking the, the last yellow into the top right hand pocket behind the deal. And it looks as if he's played it really well. That's a tremendous positional shot. And again, he's got a bit of angle on that shot, too. Oh, it's quite a fine cut, this. Probably nice and easy. Yes, yeah, that's a beautiful finish. Mick and Norrie, Andy Appleton leading by one frame to nil against Greg. And the way Greg has been playing, it would seem that anyone who can take at least a frame from him is doing well. And uh, Andy Appleton, who we all regard as an outsider in this final, has made the perfect start. Yes, he's, he's made me the outsider, but, but not a long way. I mean, Andy is a tremendous player in his own right. Uh, and the whole point about Andy being in this tournament is the fact that he's playing on television for the first time. And he's, after, as Norrie said before, a nervous first round match, he's come on to a very good game. And he's certainly looking full of confidence. Open table. I suppose in a sense we can regard this as something of an international. Andy Appleton playing for England. And Greg Farron playing in the Birmingham Irish League and playing for Ireland. Yes. Yes, he plays for the Northern Ireland international team. He has done for the last two years. Uh, I would suggest here that looking at the, the way the balls have been broken, that I would be surprised if Andy, balls if Andy gets another shot here. I would expect Greg to clean up from here. I 
mean, he played it absolutely spot on for the yellow in the middle pocket. Yes, but of course, just one mistake and uh, Andy can be back the table because every red is potable as well. Oh, well, a player of Greg's calibre gets into this position. Uh, the last thing in his mind is making the mistake. Yes, allowing his opponent back to the table. It's not landed the way Greg wanted, actually. But it's still relatively easy. The one little surprise for me in this break was not taking the yellow in the middle to start with. Greg knows what he's doing. Among the personalities present tonight, uh, Mr. Bill Crosby, the regional manager for Matthew Brown, flanked by Archie Alice of Scotland and Roger Singleton of Cumbria, who are part of the organising committee. That's another well-controlled shot. I mean, Greg will be playing the yellow in the middle here to leave himself an angle on the last yellow to the left-hand bottom pocket so that he'll be able to go on the black. And just pull this back about a foot and a half, I would suggest. Looks as if he's got a perfect angle. Perfect shot there, mate. Well, there we are. Big pile in full flight in that frame and levels the scores at one frame each. As I said at the beginning of the frame, when the balls break like that, uh, there's no one better in the country at taking a finish away than Greg is. And he seems quite uh, cheerful, happy to win that frame and uh, still full of optimism. One of the hardest things to do in major competitions at pool is actually to retain your title. Uh, not many people have done that in successive years, most big events. And it would be quite an achievement for Greg if he did that this year. Could also go on to say it's very difficult for some of us to win any titles at all, Mick. Open Timo. <laughs> well, the balls haven't broken quite as freely as they did in the last frame. And he's looking at that long red to the left hand pocket or behind the D. It'd be a good shot if he gets it. Yes. You know, once he red moved that one, once he's moved that one, you, you look at the other reds and they're all in pretty reasonable position. He's actually, actually a bit unfortunate that he's, he's very, he's got to watch that yellow side of black here. Greg, you're playing yellow balls. If it hadn't been for the yellow at the top of the table, then I would have suggested Greg would be looking for a finish again here. Uh, 
But the way that yellow's line up there, uh, he's going to have a job to get on that. I got the impression there that um, Andy just didn't give that shot an awful lot of thought before playing it. And then seemed to snatch it a little bit. And really, I mean, for Greg here, the shot that he was, he's actually thinking about is freeing the top yellow behind the D. Uh, but if he plays that particular shot, he's leaving them so open to a snooker. Plant. I think he may have a very fine cut open to him on the yellow to the right of the, the table beside the red. What I think Greg may be looking for here is to be able to take the yellow into the right hand bottom pocket behind the D if he gets a chance off the red, which in turn would free the bottom yellow behind the D. <coughs> oh, Andy's got a very good chance here. I mean, that yellow at the top of the table was always going to make it hard for Greg. But Andy's balls are all portable here. with the cue ball. It looks as if he's playing a plant right on the red off the yellow in the pocket and he's played it well. Mm, very well. That's the shot of a confident player. The only, the only saving grace from Greg's point of view is the red's actually landed in the side cushion. So it'll take a good, good positional shot to Get on that red properly. And Andy obviously is going to take one of the two bottom reds here and then the one up the side cushion at the bottom pocket behind the D and finish up on the one to the right here so that he can land on the black last. I think that will be the crucial shot. The one if he pots this red here, the shot in the top left hand. Pocket, but he's elected. Well, this particular shot, um, it's not easy to hold it for the proper position in the last round from that angle. And he's played it well. He has. Once again, this isn't easy to hold this for a black. This is a very, very delicate shot. Oh, he's lovely done it shot. Very well. He's used the yellow there to perfection to stop it, so that it'll be on the black. Ah, oh, lovely. Ah! Well, he deserves that, sir. We left our final with Andy Appleton leading Greg Farron by two frames to one. Frames four and five went even faster to Andy, but Greg came back in frame six to make it 4-2. By the end of frame seven, Andy had increased his lead to 5-2. We rejoin play in frame eight with Greg at the table playing yellows. That's killed any chance he's got at the present time of trying to go for game. Yes, I was going to say that. I just wondered what was going through Greg's head as he sat. Are we going to see a tactical battle now? Because Greg is so far behind and he maybe finds that the balls aren't rolling for him, so he's got to revert to tactics. No, it was, really it wasn't Greg that uh, started the tactical sort of move there, it was Andy. I think Greg will now possibly retaliate. Greg 
take a look to take this safe. No, oh, he's actually put it on top of the lens. I think this could be a long game. He didn't want that to happen. But what we all do now is play a snicker behind the yellow. Oh yes, whichever way it went, it was going to be that. Touching ball. the yellow knot and his ball and not leave him a decent shot. Oh. He opened it out. <laughs> and in actual fact there, uh, played a two-fold shot to try to free the red up at the side, cushion behind the D on the right hand side. And I think, you know, Mick, that he could get that red into the top right-hand pocket. I think there is room for it to go in between the cushion and the yellow. So it was quite a good shot, that. And they will probably take the pot in the middle here. And you may... See him playing a long plant up the table. And if, he, if he's successful here, he could go for a finish. That's a good shot. I think he would have liked the white ball a little bit in towards the D, possibly to try and cut that red in the top right hand into the top pocket off the yellow. Andy obviously thinks that the red up beside the yellow at the top of the tail behind the D can go off, off the yellow because he was actually opening the game out there to see if he could finish it. I mean, what Greg will probably do here is try and cover this right hand bottom pocket but in such a way that the weight comes across and doesn't leave him an easy shot on the red to plant across it onto the other three reds. It's the only way that really you can slow Andy down at the present time. Otherwise, if he doesn't cover this pocket, he'll leave Andy a reasonably easy finish. It's the only shot I can see from Greg here. I think that's what he decided to play. He's actually potted it. Well, if, if Greg's potting that with intention of going for a finish, it's one of the bravest attempts at a finish that I've ever seen under the circumstances. That's obviously what he's going to do. They're going to try it anyway. Well, when you look at the two on the left, the two yellows on the left, that he gets round behind them, it'll have to be an excellent shot with the cue ball. Maybe not quite enough, but he can still put one into the top left hand pocket. I think the shot here is, uh, it's not easy by any means. He'll need to take the left hand yellow long into the top pocket and screw back a bit to take the other yellow into the middle pocket, the right hand middle pocket. I think maybe his problem there, Mick, is that the white's too close to the 
bottom cushion to he's the actually, school bag. He's actually playing a cut into the centre pocket and knocking the other yellow out. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. It's a terrific shot. <laughs> Even Andy Appleton's giving him a nice bit of applause there. It was a brilliant shot. Well, I can assure you, if this black is in, it's one of the best, bravest, and bro most brilliant finishes I've seen in the television. Well, there's no doubt about it. Although Andy Appleton is leading by five frames to three, Greg Farron is not giving up his title without a struggle. And you were very impressed by that, Mick. That is the best finish of the tournament. Uh, the way the game was lying there, and it, it looked to have two dead yellows. Uh, he had to play the finish in such a way to get behind them, and even after getting behind them, he still got a difficult shot in the middle to knock the yellow out. And the whole finish, under the circumstances, if he misses one shot, he's dead. It was absolutely brilliant, in my opinion. Yes, I think we should all feel privileged at having been present to see that sort of finish, because the the pressure on Greg there must have been tremendous, Greg Mick. So Greg's still fighting for survival, having to win every frame to retain the title. Open table. The reds are certainly looking well placed there. Yes, every every red in the table is portable. Every red is portable on the table. Red balls nominated. I would suggest that this is a great opportunity. And he won the tournament. Oh, yeah. lo lovely shot. Well, do, you, do you see any problems with the black there, Mike, being so close to that yellow? Well, obviously, uh, he'll be playing for position on the black into the centre pocket. I mean, they'll need to work it out from there the best way to go about it. Uh, and to me, the best way would be obviously to leave one of the bottom two balls, if not the two of them, for last. Yes, I think there's only one centre pocket from where we are mm. that that uh, black would go into, and that's the middle right. Yes. <coughs> the fact that he's obviously going to leave the red behind the D to last makes it a bit more difficult for the position from that to the black. Unless he's going to try and open it up off well, this last red. There is a possibility he may screw into the black and yellow, but that's chancing to look. See, the danger with that shot is, is where the where the white lands. But again, the, the black now looks as if it might go into this uh, bottom right hand pocket. <coughs> yes, but the it's a very very difficult shot he's got in the red. Oh, great shot. Great shot. It's just a bit unfortunate with the position. But that is what happens when you decide to go for a kick. Well, is Andy Appleton one shot away now from the title? I mean, I think the black can go into the... the right-hand bottom pocket. I mean, he could either cut it in direct or possibly take it off the yellow. I would suggest that if it can go, that it would try it indirect. But in doing so, the white will be travelling very, very quick. I mean, that was a very difficult shot. And that all stemmed from Andy deciding to play a pot and a Greg, kick. Greg, you're playing yellow balls. Well, I don't think that Greg would even have to think about a snooker here. I think he's going to be able to and every yellow. 
after the last finish, I mean, Greg, <laughs> you were looking to finish with anywhere. Beside the black, there's only one bag that goes into, so we'll be playing for that after this, I would imagine. circumstances in these conditions I would say this needs a bit of nerve but after Greg's last finish then I would expect him to finish this with ice shit. Yes uh, we're about to see the impossible where Greg was so far behind that uh, there was no way that we thought he could catch up on Andy and if he takes this one he'll only be one frame behind This isn't too easy. A half ball cut, and then take the last yellow in the same pocket. Good shot. to four. He's been under pressure throughout almost the entire final. He's responded very, very coolly and surely the man under pressure now is Andy Appleton. In the exciting final stages of our pool classic competition, Andy Appleton is leading our title holder, Greg Farron, by five frames to four. But Greg seems to be making an amazing comeback. So let's get back to the table for the beginning of the tenth frame. Andy to Brett. Well, Eric, uh, you said it was 5 4. Foul, two visits. Open table. And I would predict after this visit to the table, it'll be 5 all. It's very good. A very good chance here of finishing it on yellows. Yellow balls nominated. First visit. I mean, there's, there's one or two different ways they could go here. But whatever way he decides, uh, I think Greg should finish this. Collecting his thoughts. First visit. We 
his next shot. I think he'll be playing the yellow into the left hand bottom corner here and then after that the other yellow of the right hand bottom corner and in doing so he'll leave himself free for the three yellows that are left and it should be simple from then for him. First visit. First visit. Just a matter of a slight stun from the yellow into the right hand middle pocket. Took him across slightly off the cushion for the bottom yellow into the left hand bottom pocket and finishing up with the yellow above the black into the left hand centre pocket. First visit. First visit. A little bit hard against the cushion there, Mick, but... Um, yes, uh, he would have preferred to have been off the cushion there, Nori. But he'll actually use... One of his shots, One yes. of his shots Second to make visit. sure. That's an, another good example for up-and-coming players. And then he's got a straight black into the bottom right. frames all. Oh, it's tremendous, absolutely unbelievable stuff this. You, can't, you cannot see enough about Greg here. I mean the character that the, the man's shown when he was 5-2 down and to take away a finish that he did at the time, at that particular time, and then come back to make it five each. Uh, I know we were not saying much about Andy at the present time, but really the last three frames are just all about Greg. And Andy, who was full of vim and vigor and looked like a very happy and confident man, is uh, rather concerned now. Yeah. It all depends on this one. Yes. So they're going to lag to decide who breaks once again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can ask for a better final than this, really. Andy won the lag, and Greg will break. <coughs> so here we are, the final frame of the Matthew Brown Classic. Greg Farron to break. Will he retain his title, or will we have a new champion, Andy Appleton? Well, it looks as if... Open table from the break that Andy's going to get first crack. I would look very closely at the yellows here as being the, the best place, but even the reds are in a good, fairly good position. Yes, I agree with your first assumption, Nori. I think Andy will automatically go to yellows here. And really, if you look at the way the game's lying, uh, it could very easily finish this year. Yellow balls nominated. The only, the only thing against Andy in this is the fact that he's been sitting at the table for so long. Sitting in his chair, I mean, for so long that it's a while since he's had a chance at a finish. Now, I, th I think there that he's probably had a kick on that shot with the result he's not controlled the white ball the way he should have, which is no f fault of his, obviously. That's a good shot. Yes, that was an excellent shot. There's a lot of pressure on him there as well, Mick. Yes, after getting the kick, I mean, it put him under pressure. I mean, it, 
the position he had wasn't what he wanted. But he's redeemed it quite well, really. And he's still got a good chance. He knows that he doesn't make one mistake. No. Nope. He's obviously going to cut the yellow in the middle pocket here. He's, he actually played for the bottom yellow at the D and he's just overhit it. Once again, he's run into trouble. And the only shot really he's got here is to try and put the yellow off the side, cushion me a bit of right hand side. If we can, that's if we can see enough of the cushion. Last thing he really wants to be doing here is even thinking about a safety shot. I mean, he's he's committed now. Regardless of what he does, he's got to have a go somehow. We play this off the cushion first with a bit of side. Greg, you're playing red balls. Now, can Greg win from this position? Well, I would suggest that Re Greg should probably. I mean, the proper shot here, really, is to cover this left-hand bottom pocket with the yellows. If he manages to do that, then Andy will be in all sorts of trouble. Because it's asking a lot for Greg to go for a finish there, the way the balls are lined. So, I mean, the obvious shot to me is to cover the pocket here on the left-hand side with the red. I think Greg's real problem ball at the moment is the one on the left hand cushion um, towards this end of the table. As you said, he looks as if it's going to try and cover that pocket and well, he's done it very well. That's basically the only shot he had there. Andy has still got an outside chance here because where the weight is laid, he's, he's actually been given a chance to screw up the table, to try and Get on a double on the last yellow. No, he's nowhere near it. That is a difficult position. Yes. I would say now it's looking good for Greg to retain his title. And nobody can begrudge him it if he does. Well, he even... Foul, two visits, three table. Took Greg's red off the cushion as well, the First one I was visit. speaking about. And with Greg Farron having two visits to the table, it looks as though he's going to do what we all thought several frames ago was impossible. 4-1 down, 5-2 down, and retain his title. But he's still got to play those shots. Yes, I would say that the very first shot here, if he pots one, he'll probably clear up. And when Greg's been in this position with two shots, he's rarely failed to finish a game. And I think Andy must be aware of this. Greg's actually going to play the double first to take one of the safe balls out. Although it didn't go, I mean, it's it's now in an Second e visit. easily portable position. Uh, it takes... If it takes the one up the side cushion to the left, then... No, he's taking the easier one down the bottom. But it's, no, he's actually playing the snooker. It's a good one because I don't he certainly can't get in between the two reds. No. So he's gonna have to come off one of the cushions. Just before the middle knuckle actually got a lot of side. Oh that was very close. Foul, two visits, free table. First visit. But once again he's got um, <coughs> Greg's red on the top of the table there, hard against the cushion. So Greg's gonna have to work to get that one off. Well, I would suggest that Greg will finish it from here. Probably put the first red and lie on the bottom cushion for it. First visit. This looks like curtains for Andy.
first visit. Yes, I agree with you, Mick. I can't see Andy having to come back to the table now. First visit. Looking at some of Andy Appleton's supporters in the audience just behind him, they're almost afraid to look at the table. First visit. Yes, I think, Eric, that they, they cannot believe what's happened in the last four frames. Because, to be perfectly honest, I don't think there was anyone here, with a possible exception of Greg. I thought that Greg had any chance when he went 5 2 down. First visit. Still first visit and two shots to retain his title. He's really got to be congratulated the way he's come back in this match. First visit. And having two shots on the black, uh, I think this is it. This is the best display of temperament I have ever seen in a pool match. And Greg's temperament here was unbelievable. Well. That is a most extraordinary and remarkable final. Everyone here, Mick, Norrie and myself, tremendously impressed that Greg Farrell could win 6-5. Mick and Norrie, sum it up. Well, Andy played a tremendous part in the final. And it's a pity there had to be a loser, but at the end of the day, the comeback Greg has made, and especially from the first finish at 5-2 down, was, un and to me, incredible. And it, his temperament was unbelievable all, all during the match. I mean, I have nothing but admiration for Greg for that. And I really don't think Andy should be too disappointed because there is nobody, just nobody, would have lived with Greg Fern today on that form. <laughs> so there we are, after we all agree, one of the most remarkable pool finals ever. Greg Farren has retained his Matthew Brown title, defeating Andy Appleton by six frames to five. It was an absolutely thrilling final, Andy, and I was sure at one point that you had it won. Yes, 5-2. Uh, I thought it was all over, but Greg pulled a smashing finish out, and all I can say is the man is a machine. <laughs> 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 Just keeps doing it. <laughs> and, uh, and Greg, when you were 4-1 down and then 5-2 down on the yeah. commentary position, I said, if he makes this comeback, it'll be a better comeback than Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually... Did he? Did you feel that the title was lost at one point? Um, I was sitting there at 4-1, um, and I just, something seemed to snap and I seemed to wake up. I seemed to have been asleep for five frames, <laughs> and all of a sudden I was 4-1 down, and I thought, well, what's happened to the rest of the frames where they gone? Um, and then I went 5-2 down, and I thought, well, I was right in trouble in the, the frame, the eighth frame. Uh, four balls. And I thought, well, I'm not going to win if I just keep trying to get him into possible positions. I might as well try and go for it. And fortunately, it came off and plodded away and ended up winning. It was a tremendous final. So thank you very much for that. And now the presentation to the losing finalist, Andy Appleton, by Bill Crossley, who is the regional manager of Matthew Brown. Andy, well done. Cheers. And also to the man who has retained his title, Greg Farron. <laughs> that's, that's all from us. We leave you with our champion, Greg Farron. We hope you will join us again when once again I will say, gentlemen, let's play some pool. Greg Farron. <laughs>